from a young age, I always wanted to start something. I just didn't have an idea, right? And so I went into journalism, which I also really loved and had a passion for, and then went business school. And then when Ken and I finally had this idea for um, what became Good Shop, it was, you know, I just dove into it because it's kind of in my blood. Like you have an idea, you start right. it. everyone. Welcome to another episode of Women Worldwide. Thank you so much for tuning in and for being here with us. And we know that you're facing new challenges every single day. Uh, we are in unprecedented times and uncertain times because of COVID-19. And Women Worldwide is here to share advice and insights and tips. So please reach out if you want anything answered or even if you just want to chat about things that are going on. We try to bring the guests who can really enlighten and, and help you, especially during these times. And one thing of note is that technology helps us to stay connected. Media keeps us informed and we have new media. And that's actually the subject of today's show, the podcast. And it is a way to help one another, and, and we're grateful for this. Joining me on the show, my special guest today, is JJ Ramberg. Now, you might be familiar, <laughs> or you've heard that name. JJ is no stranger to media. Uh, she was a reporter, started out at CNN. She went over to NBC, and she hosted a show for 13 years called Your Business with J.J. Ramberg. And I used to get up early to watch <laughs> the show over the weekends. Uh, she also recently completed a, a project, a series with BBC World News. And now um, she is still an entrepreneur. She's always been a serial entrepreneur. She's on her second company. And it just so happens that this company is all about podcasting. It's called Good Pods. And JJ is going to share her story and her advice. So JJ, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Welcome. Oh, thank you so much. It's so, so nice to talk to you. It's great to talk to you too. And you're in such a beautiful setting behind you. That, that's lovely. And I'm you know, hoping that you're staying all safe and, and healthy. Uh, and we're just glad to have you here. Oh, thank you. Yes, I'm, it is beautiful behind me. Um, in the this new world of virtual school, I have a um, house full of children <laughs> who are all running around, and so we needed some silence over here. Exactly. We do what we can. That's the thing. It's, this is uncharted territory, so we do what's necessary. Let's dive in. You know, I mentioned your years in media. You, this is your second company. I think your first company, Good Shop, which is still yeah. um, in existence, right? And now it's Good Pods. Why the pivot to good pods and podcasting? Um, you know, I you you talked about my my uh, career as a journalist. So when I worked for N NBC News, I had to show your business, but I also had a podcast uh, called "Been There, Built That." And so I was a podcaster, and I was also a big consumer of podcasts. And my brother also, who is my business partner, my co-founder, also listened to a lot of podcasts. And we found ourselves always calling each other saying, what are you listening to? What are you listening to? Because we had the ones we went back to, but we'd want more, right? I, I want good suggestions. And we realized there's just not a great place to get good suggestions. I just want to know what my friends are listening to. And so we just started Good Pods in essence for ourselves, right? In order to have a place to go online or on an app where I could follow my friends and experts and influencers and podcasters and see what they're listening to. It was very simple. Um, you know, it was, just, it was just solving a simple problem that we had ourselves. That's so true. And that's what I love about entrepreneurs. The best entrepreneurs solve a problem. <laughs> they see it, they solve it for themselves, and then they share it with the world. And that's exactly what you were doing. And I guess because, you know, when things change, when you um, start a new business, you go in a different direction, 
you have to learn new skills. So I'm sort of curious, did you actually have to learn new skills in order to do this? You know, I think I'm always learning new skills. So on kind of big picture, this is the second company um, I started. The first one I also started with my brother, so at the same co-founder. Um, but it's different. We didn't build an app before. We, um, you know, I didn't do something with podcasters before. It's still consumer facing, but you know, I'm I'm learning something new every single day with this company, and I'm working with different people, and so my leadership skills have evolved since early on. I just, I think we're kind of constantly always learning and trying to, I'm trying to make myself better at what it is I'm doing. I think that's really good advice though, because the more that you can continue learning and to do better, you're going to be a better leader. You're going to serve your customers, your consumers better, or whoever it is that you're, you're serving. Right. And, you know, I spent 13 years interviewing founders and CEOs and investors. Right. Um, and so I, I basically was a, a student <laughs> of entrepreneurship and of running companies successfully and, frankly, of, you know, what makes companies fail also. And so I've tried to take all of that that I've learned and put it into this company also. That's excellent. So you're taking all that knowledge, you're putting it to good use. And you know, I just, I look at you in the days of media and I see you now and I know that no matter what kind of media <laughs> you're involved with, there's challenges. So I don't know, are you, can you share uh, what were some of your challenges, let's say as the host of a TV show versus the challenges that you experience as an entrepreneur with a new company called Good Pots? <laughs> Oh, it's so different, right? I mean, it, it's, when I had my TV show, I had, you know, it was mine, I was the face of it, but there's a whole team behind me and there's a whole company behind me. Um, and so we felt a great responsibility to put great content out there and to help our audience every day. Um, and, but it is a different kind of responsibility than actually owning something where, you know, ultimately everything comes down to, to us, the owners and um, the founders of this company. And there's no human resources team to deal with when we have a question. There's no marketing team to deal with <laughs> besides the one we have created ourselves. So it's, it's just an entirely different type of responsibility. Oh, it, it definitely is. And as far as, you know, because you, you have been an entrepreneur for a long time, um, what do you like the most about being an entrepreneur? And what are the, some of the things that maybe you might want to be able to delegate to your brother, <laughs> if you can? <laughs> um, it, it is so fun. So I come from a family of entrepreneurs. Um, my, 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 both my grandfathers were entrepreneurs. Um, my father... And then my mom, when she was, she was a stay-at-home mom. And then when she was in her late 40s, she and my brother started a company together. This was in the 80s, so pre-internet. It was, you know, now that's kind of common, but not back then at all. Right. And so I really had a front row seat watching my mom and brother start this company that eventually was incredibly successful. It was, uh, they sold it to Monster.com. Um right. And so I saw how incredibly exciting it was and how incredibly hard it was. And, and so um, from a young age, I always wanted to start something. I just didn't have an idea, right? And so I went into journalism, which I also really loved and had a passion for, and then went to business school. And then when Ken and I finally had this idea for um, what became Good Shop, it was, you know, I just dove into it because it's kind of in my blood. Like, you have an idea, you start it. Um, and, and so I really, really love starting things. We're in the very beginning stages of Good Pods. And if I could show you the Excel sheet that I have of hundreds and hundreds of people that I spoke to um, with our idea, right? I just, I went to this. This was before we even put sort of pen to paper and said, would you like an app? where you can follow your friends and influencers and see what they're listening to and chat with them and, and interact with podcasters. And if the answer is yes, what do you want in there? And if the answer is no, what don't you, you know, why not? And that to me is the most fun. And then when we launched it, 
working with beta testers to say, what do you like? What do you don't like? And, you know, I'd have friends who say, I'm so sorry. I, I don't want to tell you this, but this seems off. Or maybe I don't know technology. And I'm like, no, no. Like, yeah, we want me. this. <laughs> yes. So, so it's funny, right? We have people on our team who just love working on product. And we have people on our team who just love design. And I just love being out there and launching this and hearing feedback and trying to work it all in and working with the team. Because you always want to make it better. And that's the only way that you're going to enhance the, the, the product, right? The, the app itself is by what people tell you. That's so Oh, yeah. Important. And if, if I... If I could do sort of a call out to your audience, to anyone who's listening, um, if you download Good Pods, and I hope you do, um, please tell me feedback. Be brutally honest with me because this will only get better if you tell me what you love and more importantly, what you hate. Exactly. Now, can, can anybody download it? Is this um, for an iPhone? Is this for an Android? Is it both? Um, so it is for iPhone right now. It'll be okay. ready on Android in um, very shortly, a couple of weeks. Um, oh, so depending on when this airs. But you you just go to the App Store, Good Pods, one word. And the sign up is similar to Instagram or Twitter. And then you go on and you follow your favorite, your friends. You can find your friends, your favorite podcasters. And your feed is what they're listening to. So for instance, I went for a run this morning thinking, oh, what am I going to listen to? I go on Good Pods, I scroll through my feed, I'm like, oh, that seems interesting that my sister listened to. Let me try that. Oh, that's great. I mean, it's really it's, cool. It's true because we, we are connected to our, our friends or our colleagues and their interests are similar. It's nice to know like what they're listening to, to be able to try it rather than this vast universe where you just don't know where to start. There's so many shows. There's no shortage. It's overwhelming, right? There are 30 million episodes out there. Gosh. And so, and I like to, so, you know, one of the reasons I went into journalism is I love this idea of getting to sort of dip into people's worlds and dip out and, and explore all these different lives out there. And I, what, what I loved about podcasts so early on is I got to do that, right? So I could go and learn something about science and then history and then true crime and then some comedy thing. And, and so I have people that I follow, right? I go to Chad for the kind of, you know, spiritual stuff and Gordon for the science stuff. And I'll go to someone else for the entrepreneurial stuff, right? And so like, I want to have you on Good Pod so I can follow you yes, because I love you. <laughs> I want to know what else you're listening to. Excellent. Well, we will be there. And JJ, I'm just going to ask you to hold your thoughts just for a moment. I want to switch focus over to this big passion project that I've been working on for a year plus now. Um, it's the FEEL communications model. And FEEL, everybody knows this, who's been watching the show, stands for Face Your Fears, Engage with Empathy, Use Ethics and Good Judgment, and Unleash the Love. And before I share a link where people can go test to see how they feel <laughs> online, just a question for you. The first bucket is Face Fears. So as an entrepreneur, how, are, how did you face some of those fears of stepping out of your comfort zone? I mean, you constantly must be stepping out of your comfort, comfort zone these days. Uh, always. I always am. My mother was an entrepreneur, very successful. When we were younger, she used to um, read us the book, The Little Engine That Good, where the motto is, I think I can, I think I can, right? <laughs> yep. And so... I really go back to, I think I can, and then I add to it, but I can't do it by myself. And so don't put the pressure on myself to think I can solve every problem. Just know that what the thing I think I can do is go find the person who can help me. Oh my gosh, that's awesome advice. I'm going to take that advice to heart because often as an entrepreneur, I forget that there's this big network of people who can help. <laughs> so that's excellent. Okay. Uh, everyone, if you want to take an online test that evaluates and scores how much you feel in the areas that I mentioned, go to feelfirsttest.com and you will learn very quickly how well you're doing in each part of feel. And there will be exercises that are recommended that you can do to increase 
your level of feel. And clearly, we need more feel in our communication now. JJ, let's jump back into our discussion. Uh, I wanted to ask you, and I love to ask this of entrepreneurs and, and amazing people who come on this show, about the aha moment or that big learning experience. And it can even be an uh-oh moment if you want to share that as well. So does anything stand out in your mind? Um, you know, what, I, I'll, I'll give you an aha moment for Good Pods because I'm living it right now. This company is so early, right? We just launched it, but we, we launched it to a, a beta test of people. And I follow everyone who's on the app. And I listen, or someone listened to this podcast called The Art of the Exit. And it was about a, a art heist. I mean, no one had heard of that podcast before. And then I watched it go from person to person to person. I watched it pass from person to person. Wow. And that was my, I guess not, I'm not giving you my aha moment, I'm giving you my, oh my God, it oh works my moment. God. Like yes. this idea that we had, right? Just, you know, Ken and I, my brother and I sitting around on the phone talking to each other like, it's working. And so that that's exciting. We had a, a moment like that early on with my old company, um, good shop it, at the time it was good search and um, every time you searched a penny would go to your favorite cause and I remember you know within the first month I guess the Penn State dance marathon which was a cause that was registered had earned I think two dollars and fifty two cents and it was the same like oh my you know oh my gosh. It's, you know, <laughs> that's the best moment I, I mean I think a lot of us can relate is something that you do and all of a sudden you're like, wow, this is real. It really works. I'm really so excited. But you know what? I want to be, I want to be very clear too. There's so many hard moments too, because you're my uh-oh moment mm -hmm. with this is, um, you know, we, we created this app and we put together a version of it and we thought it was ready to go and we looked at it and as much as we wanted to launch it and had everything in plan to launch it we thought this does not look good <laughs> right <laughs> this is not what it's it, it this is not going to be useful for our users and we had to kind of sit back and redesign the whole thing uh, that is seriously hard to say this is not going to be good for our users you know? Yeah, no, it's hard. And and look, I, I love, I mean, I hate nothing more um, from entrepreneurs than the sort of humble brag of like, it was so hard and now it's older $20 billion, right? Like it's, it's, you know, as you're going through it and I'm in the middle of it, it's, it is, it's very fun, but it's, you've got to work really hard and things go wrong. And, um, you know, look, we're in the midst right now of, of the most, you know, awful time in our history, right? right? Of everyone going through this at the same time that we want to really launch this company. And it's, it's very complicated because we have, you know, so much empathy for what's going on in the world and what's going on with, uh, you know, all of us, you know, loved ones who are being affected in terrible ways. And, and yet we have this company to run and you're doing the same thing. Yeah. You know, we're not alone. Every, yeah. every single person out there is trying to figure out what is this new normal. Exactly. So that, that's where this, my next question comes into play. Stress. This can be very stressful. Um, you managing your business, your family, all of you listeners out there, you have family, your businesses, there is so much uncertainty. And we, we want to care, we want to help. But at the same time, if you don't manage yourself, you're no good to anybody else. So JJ, how are you managing your stress um, so that you can help others? Um, you know, for me, I feel like once I have a plan, I'm good. I get most stressed when I do not have a plan. So as soon as I kind yeah. of figured out, okay, this is how my family and I are going to deal with this and my extended family, right? And uh, then I'm okay. Now I'm put into action mode, right? And, and, um, and I do things like I, I try and focus on what I can, my work, my kids, exercise, you know, meditation when I can, which I'm not very good at, but I certainly try to. Um, and then I really try and think about what is good in my life because 
I know. I mean, look, you and I are having this conversation right now. We are very fortunate. There are so many people in so much worse positions than us. And so I, um, and as a family practice, really try and, and really pay attention to the good and not the bad, um, or rather what to be grateful for. You have to pay attention to the bad too, but really what to be grateful for. And I know that kind of sounds like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, but I, I really try and do it. And, and I come from a family where I'm lucky where we're, we're sort of dispositionally like that. Um, so I think in some ways you're born like that, in some ways you're right. not, but you can work on it no matter where you are on the spectrum. Yeah, I, I mean, so. what you said about finding the something positive the gratitude, it, it just reminds me of something I saw out on Instagram by one of my friends, influencers. You know, things can be contagious and, and fear and anxiety. There, there is a lot of bad things that are going on and, and our hearts go out to everybody. And we want everybody to be safe and healthy. But the, whatever you tap into, it's a choice and you want it to be contagious. So if you can find ways to be positive and to be able to share that, then I think there's this hope that that can be contagious as well. And that together With, we can spread that. Without question, without question. And you know, I don't know if you've ever heard Dr. Michael Gervais, um, but he talks about training yourself for optimism. Yeah. Um, and it's, it, you know, there's just so much you can do here, right? Exactly. In, with, your, with your own attitude and your own brain. And, it, it, you know, as hard as, as this time is right now, even right now, just, you know, a, a few weeks in, there's so many nice moments mm -hmm. amongst okay. friends and people coming together in community and, you know, families kind of turning inward. and and so you focus on that. That's a really, really good point. JJ, I can't even believe that we're up to the advice question. <laughs> so this rounds out our, our discussion here. What advice can you share with Women Worldwide listeners about how they can kind of find their way, use technology, do what they do best? What would you say to them? You know, my friend Courtney Nichols um, Gould, I, I, I talk about this a lot, but she, she gave me this advice a while ago. She's this incredible woman who started this company called Smarty Pants, which is incredibly successful um, and, and has a great marriage. And she said to me, you know, you got to go into things knowing that they're going to be hard and that's okay. Whether it is starting a company or starting a new job or a relationship, just know at some point, it's going to be hard. And that way, when it gets hard, you're not shocked. <laughs> it doesn't throw you off balance. You just say, okay, here's the hard part. Let me get through this. It'll be tricky, but I can get through this. And then we'll get to the easy part again. And then it'll get hard again. But if you go into something knowing that, I just think it makes those the roller coaster of it much easier because you know it's coming. Exactly. That's really good advice. It's knowing that it's hard and it's that can-do attitude. I think that's what that advice was alluding to. So thank you for that. And last question, super easy. Where can everybody find out about you and of course, Good Pods? Um, good Pods, you just uh, go to goodpods.com or go to the app store and download Good Pods. And please tell me, I'm giving you my email. It's just JJ at Good Pods. Tell me what you love and tell me what you hate. We want to make this app great. Um, and you can find me on um, Twitter at JJ Ramberg or Instagram or um, JJRamberg.com. Awesome. We will find you <laughs> and we will share all of that great feedback, the good, the bad, the ugly, <laughs> whatever is necessary. JJ, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show, for sharing about good pods and all of the great advice. We really appreciate you. So thank you. Oh, thank you. I had such a fun time talking to you. This was great. Me too. And, and all of the Women Worldwide listeners, thank you so much. Please be safe and secure. Our hearts go out to all of those whose health and, and security has been impacted by the pandemic. And we are here for you always. And until our next episode, friends, stay focused, energized, safe, and feeling empowered. Thank you.